Every day is an opportunity to give voice to individuals that have a story that it just hadn't been written in yet. Let's go do it! On this show, we will explore sporting art, dogs of the hunt, and the sportsmen and sportswomen that collectively give voice to narratives that bring the unlikely to the outdoors. My name is Darrell Smith, and this is the Sporting Life Notebook. All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Sporting Life Notebook show. This is your host, Darrell Smith. I'm glad to be back with y'all, man. I uh, It has been a fun, fun, fun last couple of weeks. Um, we're bringing in a whole bunch of new stuff for you, new content, um, you know, so just a few things that you should expect out of this episode today. Um, first and foremost, I want to shout out my good buddy, Jamie Daniels, who uh, has had a phenomenal week. Uh, so, you know, definitely shout him out and, and give him an applause. And, you know, with Miller's Blindsider, he uh, won the national championship and then also won the Masters Open All Age uh, Championship. And then at the same time, Jamie had Just Irresistible, who made the Hall of Fame. So this is just a fantastic week, you know, and, and, and little little time frame for uh, Mr. Jamie Daniels. So shout out to him. He's a good buddy of mine. Um, but man, we in my art studio, man. We, we are in the studio, um, different setting, just, you know, classic, you know, what I think is space goes coast to coast, uh, uh, talk show type deal, man. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, you know, in this new realm of the Sporting Life Notebook. But what you should also be looking for, man, we got Darrell's picks coming up, um, you know, and those are those are going to come from some of my favorite uh, products from my favorite sponsors. Uh, we also have Dialogues with D. Lamar. That's going to be a good little dialogue, a little bit, a little, little chat about some of my uh, upcoming art, artwork for uh the gospel of great dog men. And then uh, we got a feature profile, Amanda Michellis, who my mentee uh, did really well at the Georgia, Florida shooting dog handlers club field trial uh, held at long pine plantation this year is 43rd, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, you know, the long pine owners and, and Kevin's of Thomasville got us some really dope shirts uh, that are made that can definitely kind of check that out, you know, in some photos and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, man, once we get through that, we're going to move on, uh, to the podcast and, and that I've already produced. So once you listen to this, if you haven't already go and check out the episode, uh, that I dropped last, last C, the last two seaweed episodes, um, uh, that I did with just on conservation, that whole group from John Kohler, South Carolina, uh, DNR, Quail Forever, uh, Longleaf Alliance, uh, you know, just just an incredible group. And then uh, after that, I did a podcast with uh, Luke Colby from Russell Moccasin. So check that out on the Sporting Life Notebook podcast um if you haven't already but let's go ahead and get started guys let's 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 go ahead and get into the mix of this what's up guys Thank you. 
So first up, let's talk about the trial. The Georgia Florida Shooting Dog Handlers Club uh, field trial, the Black Handlers Club, which I, I do uh, I, I do a piece on every year. Well, this year was a little bit different. So uh, <laughs> Jug, Jughead was the dog that I was going to run uh, at this trial, and we had a dang good time. We were getting ready for it and uh, messed around two days before the field trial goes on uh two days as we're getting dog is get you know back broke like i done done well cuts his paw in the kennel i'm like ah oh. ripped the nail out and everything but it wasn't bleeding um so i was like okay well he, he had stopped it apparently you know because i guess he had done it overnight don't i i it, it was a loose nail apparently somewhere in there, and he, he had, I guess, been trying to hack it out. But anyway, cuts the paw, not bleeding. So I go clean it, disinfect it, and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, so I uh, scratched him from the trial and uh, asked, uh, I, had, I had been talking to Manda um, about whether or not we were going to, if I was going to scratch him, what she wanted to do, um, you know, in the event that I did, if she wanted to run in my place. Now, the whole time, she was pretty much like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. Like, I, I, I just kind of want to scope it out the first year. And then the day of, she was like, okay, you know, I definitely, definitely do it. It's like, all right, cool. In the event that I had to scratch. Well, sure enough, she stepped up to the plate. And Benny made it through the brace, um, which was great. I mean, she that, and that's part of it, man. Like sometimes it's not necessarily always about fines for a dog that is his first field trial. Um, she didn't have to pick him up. He stayed to the front and kept moving, you know, and that's that's really good. And so now she knows what to expect going forward. But then also, uh, you know, I had a good time, you know, watching her you know, work through all the stuff that she had been training for, uh, you know, for the, for this long at this point. Um, well, there were some other very, very memorable moments, um, during the trial on the upside. That was the only bad things I had to, I had to pull my dog, but otherwise the trial was fantastic. The weather was beautiful. Um, so I'm going to show you some clips. Um, one of William who took, uh, Neil's place at St. Cola Plantation, uh, William had just, in my opinion, the most memorable run. Um, so check this out right here. <laughs> Willie in the zone right now, man. <laughs> He 
rolling out there now. There's John. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please don't be gone, John. He trying to be. Yeah, he's, he's got a... He's trying to be now. Come on, John. I like, I like that range on him, though. Yeah. That, like... Bird up. Each way. <laughs> That's your thing. He on. That dog about to break. Birds in the next damn county now. They done ran. They gonna flush as soon as we head that way. as soon as we head that way.
Look at that, Willie. <laughs> so okay, we didn't have one. Who didn't get one? I'm fine. I'm fine. We'll get you one, man. I promise you. Okay, okay. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Time keeper. Time keeper. Woo! Woo! Yes, sir. Another 
from a, a, a fresh young lady that joined the club, Amanda. Okay, third place. Got a little darker on the ball. Jamal. Okay, third place. Got a little darker on the ball. Jamal. 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 Coming up the hill, I told you to. Hey, get on out the way. Second place. Are oh, we ready? Give me third place. Okay. Don't we have third place? Come on in. Right there. I was, I was keeping it. Sorry. I didn't know there was money in there. All right. We ready for second place? Yeah. We've got Terry. Yes, sir. Right here. 
better be smiling, Coach Alex. All right, smile. But it's your year, man. Coach Alex. Well, well, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to call him. I don't know. Come on. Come on. All right. Lamont? Yeah. 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 Billy Hill. <laughs> Boy, he's he's a a so just <laughs> like, he's so he's 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 you so I got you. 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 I so as you can see, that was we had a good time right there, and that moment from William was just my all-time favorite uh, of the whole thing. Um, but Neil ran really well. You know, man, it it was it was really awesome. Thanks, uh, Dogs Unlimited, for you know your support and, and sending us um, some gear and, and and some some discounts and promo to our club members. Um, you know, they were really excited and they're definitely uh, going to be placing some orders. As you can see, I got my Kevin's shirt on uh, that Long Pine guys had made for us. So, you know, I, uh, I, I appreciate it. You know, it's really nice. It's, it's the camo feel like silk, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, this is some really good feeling stuff. Um, you know, and, and, Man, it, everyone there at the trial just like the the energy matched the day. Everyone was excited, um, and the scenery was just beautiful. Like Boss Man did really well. Uh, he came out hot. Now I, I came flying around, you know, the quarter after everybody took off uh, for about the first three braces. He was pretty, pretty, you know, high strung around other horses, but he mellowed out, simmered down, and we rode just fine i mean he he looked fantastic and there's a, a a little bit of video that i got of him riding me riding him or whatever and that was that was dope he looked he looks like a very very nice tennessee walker which he is uh so i was excited about that but as we move forward i want to get to Darrell's picks so check these out we've got some uh some of my favorite items from benchmade knife company beretta usa uh, you can a sporting dog and and just a few books too, man. I'm gonna tell you all about the books. So here we go with uh, this next section uh, Darrell's picks All right, so most of you guys uh, ask me about what books I'm reading where to find them and uh, It's kind of some of my thoughts on what I think about them and uh, and I've always wanted to talk about this That's one of the doper things that anyone could ask me um, is what books I'm reading. That, that's that's a good thing. Like, that's a dope question. But uh, not for me, but just for anybody. Like, th those are the things that I'm really interested in knowing about a person. But one of the things that I'm definitely exploring right now, um, you know, is is my literary journey and what that looks like as it applies to the South and the Southern landscape um, and all of that. But anyway, I've had the pleasure of developing friendships with the good folks at Garden and Gun. Of course, I just got done with the uh, event up in Seawee, which was really fun. Uh, you can also see photos and, and, and stuff like that from the show notes, either in the podcast or, or this one. Um, but I picked up three books, two from Garden and Gun, uh, one from the Longleaf Alliance um, that I haven't read yet, but I got to get to, but I'll talk about them now because they're really dope. Uh, those two books, one of them is a magazine for Garden and Gun, but this is Good Dog by David D. Benedetto and the editors of Garden and Gun, Good Dog, True Stories of Love, Loss, and Loyalty, and the inside in, uh, 
uh, passage, I guess, goes, uh, Gardening Guns mag Magazine's aptly named Good Dog column is one of the publication's most popular features. Now, Editor-in-Chief David D. Benedetto and the editors of Garden Gun have gathered their favorite essays as well as original pieces for this must-read collection of dog ownership, companionship, and kinship. By turns humorous, inspirational, and poignant, Good Dog offers beautifully crafted stories from such notable writers as P.J. O'Rourke, Jane, or John Meacham, and Roy Blunt Jr. from the troublemakers who can't be fenced in to the lifelong companions who never leave our sides. This one-of-a-kind anthology showcases man's best friend through all of his most endearing and maddening attributes. So I'm excited to get into this one when I do. Um, the other one from Gardening Gun, and this is just a really good issue thus far. I've been to Texas a couple of times also recently, so, you know, working on some some stuff for Minority Outdoor Alliance. But, of course, one of my favorite issues, like, I read Gardening Gun a lot. This is one of my favorite ones by far. But um, it's the Best of Texas uh, issue. So this was just really resonant for me because it's also the issue that was out when I did my talk um, and then from the Longleaf Alliance this beautiful beautiful coffee table book here that I got from the good folks uh, Lindsay who I interviewed on the podcast she gifted me this one but Longleaf far as the eye can see a new vision of North America's richest uh, richest forest uh, it's written by Bill Finch, Beth Maynard Young, Rhett Johnson, and John C. Hall with a foreword by O.E. Wilson. Um, you know, and just a little bit about the inside. Uh, Longleaf Forest once covered 92 million acres from Texas to Maryland to Florida. Uh, these grand old growth pines were the alpha tree of the largest forest ecosystem in North America and have come to define the southern forest, but logging, suppression of fire, deliberate destruction by landowners, and complex web of other factors reduce those forests so that longleaf is now found only on 3 million acres. Fortunately, the stately tree is enjoying a resurgence of interest, and longleaf pines are once again spreading across the south, blending a comparing, uh, compelling narrative by writers Bill Finch, Rhett Johnson, and John C. Hall, with Beth Maynard Young's breathtaking photography, Longleaf, far as the eye can see, invites readers to experience the astounding beauty and significance of the majestic Longleaf ecosystem. So that one I'm very excited to uh, dive into. Um, hadn't gotten around to it yet just because I need to finish reading Sue Tidwell's Cries. Of the Savannah, an adventure and awakening, a journey to understanding African wildlife conservation. Um, this book here is really awesome. I'm in the early chapters of it, so I'm still waiting for the, the, the story to continue developing. Um, but it's really interesting to have a perspective um, of someone who's a bit of an outsider to the hunting space and then taking the extreme approach, the not, I guess, extreme in the context of like, that's not something that she would otherwise be doing. She had an appreciation for hunting as a kid because of her family or brothers and, and father, but didn't actually do it in her and, and had this vision of going to Africa to see, you know, animals in their native environment in a much more padded situation safari but her husband wants to go hunting and they go to the bush and they actually get the real life experience of being out there truly in the wild and embracing it and learning more about conservation so me personally i'm actually very excited um to to get further into this book to learn that perspective uh, like i said especially from someone who uh you know, doesn't hunt. So she's coming in with a completely different lens. Um, so Sue Tidwell's book, you should get it. I have it uh, signed in softback and I bought the hardcover because I'm just a hardcover fan. Um, I like the durability and I don't want to mess up my paperback uh, that I have from her. So that's really exciting, man. I'm, 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 I'm glad to share these books and I'll, I'll talk to you guys more about them as uh, time goes on. All right, so lastly, 
uh, before we exit the show, I just also, we talk about books that I'm reading. I did not list this one. This here is Joseph Stella's Visionary Nature book, the exhibition from the High Museum here in Atlanta. Um, and it was a fantastic exhibition, one that actually really motivated me and inspired me um, to doing the work that I'm actually starting on now, uh, these black and whites, the gospel of great dogmen. So yeah, man, that show was just, he does, he has such a range of different types of works, different pieces, um, just phenomenally talented in so many different areas, all inspired by nature, you know, and I related a lot to it because, uh, you know, his, his Italian heritage, he, he immigrated from Italy to America to New York. So he involved himself with that landscape, you know, but still maintained a connection to nature and found beauty and natural elements within that concrete landscape. So just check it out. Um, Visionary Nature NPR actually just did a um, City Lights uh, piece about it um, from the director of the High Museum. So that was really cool to listen to. But I'm glad I got this book. I try to get books for the exhibition shows when we go. Also, from my Durrell's Picks, um, shout out to National Wild Turkey Federation. Um, so I just got back from their uh, convention, 50 years, and came back home with a Higdon Outdoors uh, power call. I got it from Bo Brooks, matter of fact, and it was just fantastic. I'm, I'm really excited to get to using it. Um, you know, Turkey... Turkey is, is a new venture for me. You guys know that. And I'm excited about the tools and the, the game of chess that I get a chance to play. So I'm excited to have this slate call. Um, you know, just really, really cool stuff. And I also got some diaphragm calls. So I get a chance to mess around and practice with these. Bo Brooks. Bo Brooks call so it was cool to meet Bo actually he was he was really nice um and thanks to Fred Bird who got me uh hooked up with him and and, and recommended me getting his call so check out also the uh turkey call all access uh podcast hosted by my good buddy Fred Bird uh we had an episode I was on there um you know with at the at, at the uh, National Wild Turkey Federation convention so check out that conversation as well I'm also really inspired by the works of uh, Eva Clayson's, who my good buddy Will Hereford uh, photo photographed uh, down in Uruguay, and he posted about her on her on his Instagram, um, just a photo, some a few photos that he took, and I was just moved to find out who this artist was. So I went to her page and then found it myself to evaclaysons.com or website, and her work is so representative of the work that I want to move back to, you know. So check those pieces out. Um, you can kind of see here, like it's just, you know, it's it's the type of stuff. These are just a few piece, pieces um, and his posts that motivated me to go looking and, and, and get inspired. So as we wrap up this episode of the Sporting Life Notebook show, I just want to remind you guys to stay tuned with our monthly updates uh, through our back at it newsletter, you can go subscribe, uh, find a link and stuff like that in the, in the comments and in the description. Uh, so subscribe to our newsletter, but also, um, shout out to Steuben North America for sending me an incredible scout saddle that I'm thrilled to implement into my horseback work in the uplands. I hope you guys go check them out. If you, especially if you are horseback bird dog guy, I know it's outside the norm, but that's the benefit and beauty of his English saddle, Scout saddle, Biomex C. I rode it um, all day uh, this past weekend at uh, the Georgia Florida Shooting Dog Handlers Club field trial. Loved it, loved it, loved it. It's worth the investment. And I will actually be having some student folks on as well to talk about it a bit more. It's, it's different for me. I wasn't used to riding an English saddle, but this time it was worth it. I'm glad I made that transition. Um, and then also make sure that you guys go and join your favorite conservation organization. You can follow mine's Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership, Minority Outdoor Alliance, um, National Wild Turkey Federation, Pheasants and Quail Forever, Rough Grouse Society, um, Georgia River Network. Go and join these organizations. Athens Land Trust. Uh, get hooked up with them. Like. You know, everything that I'm involved in, I truly believe 
um, believe in and advocate for. So make sure that you guys go. If you haven't, it is your due diligence to do so to make sure that you are giving back to the lands that we take from. So guys, that's another episode of the Sporting Life Notebook Show. Thanks to all of our sponsors, um, our partners, our friends, our, you know, the, our community, really. Thank you guys for tuning in with me and uh, we'll see y'all next episode.